today we are going to learn about hl7 to xml conversion so it is very easy to convert any hl7 message to xml by changing things inside data types but we also need to learn on how to hard code how to do changes and what fields are required in the output so we we'll learn about uh, creating a new channel and try to do this uh, changes in the mirth integration engine i'll go to mirth uh, integration engine i'll just click on new channel and i'll give the channel name as hl7 to xml and i'll just uh, save it i'll just give zero here for my reference purpose and i'll just save it and i'll deploy the channel so i haven't created anything over here it's source and destination and i'll explain one major difference uh, before going ahead and starting the creation i'll just go to my channels back okay so i gave a filter active over here so there is no channel with the name of active this is out of the syllabus what i'll do i'll go to my channel and i'll give it as active so the thing is like it's a filter to make sure our channels are uh, pretty simple and clear so for the explanation purpose i am just using this so what i'll do i'll type active over here and all the channels will be removed from my screen so it will be easy for you to understand yep i'll go back to this and in the summary itself you can see there is something known as set data types and over here you can see the inbound is hl7 and the outbound is also in hl7 it is a response yeah hl7 and hl7 version 2 so you can do the changes from here but i'll let you explain how this thing works i'll just click okay i'll save the changes and i'll deploy this channel i'll go back to dashboard and i'll copy one a sample hl7 message without any real time patient data in it and i'll just send it you can see everything is zero here i'll process this message i'll refresh you can see inbound and outbound perfect right yeah i'll go over here you can see hl7 message which we have sent in our raw form nothing has been encoded over here as we uh, didn't did any changes in filter or transformer and this is the message which has been sent so because we selected inbound as hl7 and outbound as hl7 we can see this change over here there is no change now what happens is i'll just go out and i'll do a small change over here i'll just change this font to xml so the expectation would be the destination inbound will automatically be converted to the xml without any changes in the transformer or without any filters so if the input sending application wants the receiving application the complete the receiving application wants all the details of hl7 to be in xml pattern without any changes you can do this and just uh, start running the channel without any issues so you don't worry about this response uh, it's it's all about uh, in which format you need the response like the message acknowledgement which you'll get so i'm not uh, looking over it right now you can keep it as hl7 or xml i'll just change hl7 to xml i'll click okay i'll save changes and i'll deploy the channel now I'll just send the same sample message over here that's a server message and it should get converted to xml you can see received one sent one I'll process it it should become two two and two you might be asking what is the source uh, type and destination type don't don't get worried on that that is just channel writer or channel reader so if you want to know yeah it is channel reader and channel writer just select uh, this for time sake and yeah i'll go back to my destination and i'll check the last message which i have sent so this was a hl7 message which we have sent and it is transformed to xml as we selected uh, xml as our output and we haven't done any change in the transformer so it is the same output we got and it is sent in the xml pattern this is how uh, hl7 to xml is uh, get converted even in the response you haven't selected anything so you 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 got uh, nothing message routed successfully to channel id if you have selected something else like the destination ib port you might receive a response from there so as you have any anything not, nothing else selected you didn't get any response because it's channel id now let's go back to topic so so it's nothing great right like uh, changing from hl7 to xml but the point is like when the receiving application says i just don't want all this things i only want specific fields and even they will say i want a specific pattern so i'll just show you an example so the input should be in a hl7 format in this way and the output output should be like this the receiving application says i need this in this xml pattern with 
only specific details like the ID, bed name, patient name, and all the specific details. So how to do that? So this is where uh, the important uh, conversion comes out. So this is very important, guys. Uh, if you're try new to this, I'll go to destination. I'll go to edit transformer, and I'll start with uh, the basic uh, JavaScript, and I'll write HL7 to XML mapping. And you don't need any like functions or any big code over here. Just a small uh, important thing which you need to do is the template. This is where everything will get changed. What I'll do, I'll just copy this and I'll paste it over here as a template. So you can see the message tree has been already changed with the specific details over here. Perfect. What about the output template? For example, I'll copy this and you can already see the output template is already selected to XML because we selected in the data type as XML. That's good, right? Now I copied this. So the message tree should be formed for this, but it will not form because there is a small error. So the template is not valid XML. So whenever you are pasting something, you should remember that it's in the exact format. If I go back, so here it is. I just didn't give this tag. Perfect. So the XML template should work and even the output will be in this particular format. And if you go over here, that's perfect. You got the XML pattern. Now, it's very easy. It's just drag and drop the fields which you required and just some bit common sense on uh, how spaces and things works. I just go back to this. So over here, I said I need output. To make it easier for you, I even copied what details are needed in the output. For example, I just said uh, P13.8. ID is in P1 3.8, bed name is in 3.8, and patient name is in P5. So what, what we'll do, we'll map this. I'll just map ID to 3.8 of P1. I'll just go here. I'll just drag the temporary ID. I'll keep it as equal. I'll go to 3.8. Now here, the problems will arise. What I'll do, uh, I'll go to P1 3. So you can see, uh, there is only 3.7. So you need 3.8. The template doesn't have 3.8. So it's always important what the sending application is sending to us, like what we are getting from the inbound. If their pattern is different, everything will get errored out. So we should always take a best sample message. So I'll, I'll solve this problem. As we have only 3.7 and we need to map 3.8, I'll go to message tree. I'll go over here and click P13, 3.2, 3.3. You can see four, five, six, seven, eight. So at the last, what you can do, you can add another mm, component separator and add anything like A. Okay, you should get 3.8 now. I'll go and in the three point, you, can, you got 3.8. It's just very simple. If you want 3.9, that's very simple. Again, I'll go over here and I'll add something like, okay, A. Again, carrot A, again, carrot A. So you'll get all the rest of values like 3.9, 10, 11. You go here, PV1, 3. Point, yeah, okay. Yeah, PV1, 3.9, 10, 11. So HL7 doesn't have 3.10 and 11, so it didn't give any values. For the understanding purpose, I added extra components. So if you know how HL7 works, you can just add the components, subcomponents, and uh, iterations. So right now we have 3.8. I'll just drag this over here. Perfect. It works, right? That's good. We'll go back to our specifications. So it says bed name should be yeah 3.8. This is without space. So it again depends. If you don't the value which we are getting from here, and what I'll do, I'll just map the same over here for the time sick. Sometimes the value might be large and we don't need space over here. We can remove the space by the small functions. So I'll just keep it very simple again. I'll just map 3.8. And the patient name will always be in PID5. Now, it might be interesting when it comes to patient name. I'll just map this. And when you go to PID5, perfect, you can see a lot of things over here. PID5.1, PID5.2, and a lot of things. What I'll do, for example, what if we have a lot of details in the PID value? For example, this is 1, this is 2. So to make it easy again, what I'll do, I'll just copy it. And I'll edit in the screen so everyone can understand. 
yeah bed one two three four five this is the patient name we have only two fields bit 5.1 5.2 what i'll do i'll just add some random data so that we might get all the values in bit 5 okay so you don't need to worry about this a this is all the component subletter and some random values this will not be copied in any any message it's all about how many fields which sub components which we are creating in it i'll just copy it and i'll just paste it over here and remember uh, it's very important if you paste anything wrong regarding this fields again this should be recreated from scratch now i'll go to bit 5 point 3 point sorry bit 5 you can see we have a lot of details family name given name suffix prefix so what uh, if we need all the details of this uh, patient name from bit 5 to 5.11 just drag this that's it the output will be copied automatically if you want only specific details what you can do for example i'll copy the family name i'll copy the family name okay oh sorry 5.1 and i want even 5.2 the given name okay I'll even tell uh, some small changes over here on how this reflects. I'll just enter it and yep, we are good with that. And I'll go back to our yeah attending physician, PV17. So what I'll do, I'll go to attending physician, PV17, and I'll just even copy that. So I want to make sure you are not getting confused and you are uh, getting the perfect details i am just copying pvn okay or i'll do i'll just copy the complete pv17 to make sure you will get a good example so yep we will do uh, the rest of the things later with with some small examples now let's see how the message changes i'll just go back and you remember we only copied four four fields we have a lot of things one two three four five six and I'll just show you an example how this thing works and I'll save it and I'll deploy this perfect I'll copy this sample message okay I'll just try to send it send the message and even over here what I'll do I'll keep something as math tutorials so our output should be in the XML pattern with the name math tutorials I'll process this. I'll refresh. See, you can see the third message has been delivered. I'll go back to destination. This is the raw message which we have sent. This is how it got transformed. Now I'll just copy this to the XML pattern and we'll we'll compare it. You can see we got the ID as A, we got the bed name as A because we did the same uh, code changes over here. So I'll just go back to the code. I I just copied same 3.8 3.8 here intentionally, so we we got the same value over here. Now if you go to bit 5, we copied bit 5.1 and 5.2, so we got merge tutorials over here. But we need space. We need space in between. I'll tell how to do. So these are the things I'm changing, and you can see it is clustered with all those details. You might be wondering why it is because we copied complete p1 segment so when you go here sorry we copied complete p17 so when you go here we have a lot of details over here we only want specific when you went to pit 5 we only copied 5.1 and 5.2 it is very neat and crisp but we need space but if you go to p17 we we completely copied that uh, field and we got all these details we will only need specific things Okay, what we need over here, uh, I'll even add, see, it's very, very bad looking ones, only specific field. Okay. I'll just go back and, yeah. So, if I go back over here, you can see uh, there is no data in prefix and degree because we haven't done any changes to prefix and degrees. So, if you haven't done any changes, it will reflect in this way. For example, if you have in the message template something apart from xxxa the output would be like this so always remember uh, your tag should be clean and crisp if you have any wrong data in the tag 
it will get hard coded so this is nothing but this got hard coded so always remember the output uh, template should be clean and neat hard coded okay what we'll do we need to create a space over here in the pit file this is where we need space i'll go here and i'll just create double quote space double quote and i'll give space this is nothing but we are adding this particular space string again we are adding this string over here so we'll get something like a space over here in the output mart space tutorial it should get so we'll see in the output how it reflects and the other thing is like so as we got lot of details i only want to copy specific details i'll go back and go back to message 3 p17 i want to copy only family name and i'll just add the plus symbol over here and same similarly i want a space again plus symbol over here and the given name okay you can see this values are been uh, decrypted so the names would be completely different from the original values okay now we'll see the output what we'll do for this uh, i'll go to message template and you can see uh, intentionally i change it to a and the output should be a we'll see how this thing works okay now that's perfect i'll go back i'm intentionally not mapping this anywhere here to make sure you realize what will happen to this i'm going back i'll just save the changes i'll deploy it now i'll go to dashboard and i'll send the message so every time you don't need to copy the message and send it you can do one thing if you go to destination you have this raw message right you just select it you don't need to select like this you can just select from here and reprocess the result so i just don't want to reprocess the result result is nothing but this i'll just reprocess the message to the destination okay so automatically the message will be passed rather than me copying it from here every time i just want to reprocess it directly overwrite existing i don't need to overwrite i'll just click okay you can see there will be a third message fourth message here one two three right i'll refresh and i'll search this third message which we have done changes this is a raw this is a transform you can see our third message has a lot of changes i'll just go at and compare with this i'll directly compare no problem so our output was without space we need space now we got space over here and this was very <laughs> only specific fields we need only specific fields we got only two specific fields over here and this was as i said hard coded it was xx previously now it got changed to a so if you want to hard code anything you can directly give in the, the message tree i'll just copy this and paste it over here you can see the difference so this is how you will do a changes from hl7 to xml if you and this is very very basic example again not a complicated one to make sure you understand the concept of uh, conversion of hl7 to xml with the hard coding specific fields and do some changes this is the way you need to do and there will be very complex changes in real time but uh, my main uh, thing is to make sure you understand this so never forget about the message template uh, the data types over here and never forget the data types over here so that's it you are successfully able to convert from hl7 to xml without any complexities thank you